I goofed up. I'm man enough to admit it. A few months ago, I think, maybe even last year, I put out a video talking about this, the Pentax Super Program. Kind of how to do the initial like inspection, walkthrough of it, such as it was. I did not do an actual walkthrough video, so I wanted to kind of go over that now, just in case it wasn't as explicit as it could have been. So, and plus I've learned a lot more about this camera because I've just spent the better part of six months trying to repair one. But for now, this is the Pentax Super Program. It's introduced in 1983, so it's uh, seen some years and utilizes the KA mount system. So that is the Pentax K mount, but the A stands for auto, which is auto aperture meaning it has these little contacts here for the readout of the auto mechanisms of the lens, which is pretty clever, if you ask me. It operates under the same kind of function as the K1000 does and the ME Super and all these with uh, the aperture resistance band right here, sitting underneath the lens mount. You have your lens release switch here, so if you press down on that, you will notice that that goes in, so to demonstrate I have like a thousand Pentax lenses but none of them are near me apparently so to demonstrate we have this this is just a normal normal lens nothing special I'm gonna line up the red dot there with that red dot there rotate it in good to go we have a depth of field preview tab here, similar to on the P30. It's black, so it's gonna be a little hard to see. But if you press in on that, we'll close the blades. Again, press down on this, rotate counterclockwise, good to go. Moving on, uh, here we also have the self timer switch. So if you press that out, it will expose this red LED system here. And if you rotate this on, you are greeted with this and it will beep, which is kind of helpful. There's a little speaker right there. It is kind of a nice inclusion there. On this side here, you have this button there and then you also have a flash sync port. So what this button does is this will actually illuminate the LED uh, screen, which sits right here. So if you're shooting in a low light environment, press in on this. That will illuminate the screen so that way it's not dependent on light coming in to illuminate it, which is kind of a neat little feature. Something that's not seen on the Program Plus, which is kind of the boiled down version of the Super Program. This is also marketed as the Super A, so you've seen kind of both, but Super Program is more common because I believe that is the one that was sold in America, and that is where I currently live. So on the top, advanced lever here. It does have this little rubber uh, sealer on it, which is kind of only bespoke to this system. Uh, a lot of the times these kind of dry up and chip away, so it's something that like doesn't look very good, I don't think, but that's kind of a cosmetic deal. You've got the frame counter on the front there where it belongs. Just kidding, that was a whole issue, but we have an LED screen right here, which is the readout for the shutter speed. There's an auto setting. It's the same kind of rotational function selector as the ME Super, ME, all these good things. So there's lock, there's auto, and to get it away from auto, you press down on this gray tab. I'll move it down to manual, 1 1 25th, and bold. Now you'll see that on the screen, all of those are registered there. You can see the 125, and you can see whatever speed manually setting. You've got your up down arrows here. So we'll cycle through all of those. It does have a top shutter speed of 1 2,000th of a second, similar to the ME Super. And yeah, that's pretty much it. The auto setting will also show you what speed to select at. You can see as I adjust the aperture resistance, that will change. But for now, we'll just leave it unlocked. There's a hot shoe right here. Again, the flash sync speed is 1 1 25th of a second. Contrary to the ME Super and the ME, uh, this does not have any mechanical speeds. So if there are no batteries in this or the batteries are dead, this will not work, which I think is not my favorite thing, but that is kind of the truth of it. Over here, you have your exposure compensation meter and you also have your ISO 
selector. So simply press in on this little tab there, rotate this outer ring, and you can adjust your ISO. Don't press down on that and you can move this around. I think the ISO range is 6 to 1600, I'm pretty sure. Oh, 3200. So it's 6 to 3200. It's a pretty decent range. You will likely not need much else than that. On the back here, you have this as your little memo slot, which is kind of nice, kind of nice to have. You've got a little ergonomic thumb grip there, which coincides with the detachable grip on the front here. Uh, the camera that you buy may or may not have this on. It's not necessary to have, but it is a nice inclusion. Opening up the back, you simply pull up on this. That pops up, boom, there we go. It is roughly, if not exactly, the same shutter mechanism and uh, advanced system as the ME Super. And to demonstrate that, I've got my test roll. So we will load this as such, and I will demonstrate exactly how to do this again. This is my test roll, it's fried. So if you are actually loading film into this, don't do it with the back open. Well, just do as I say, not as I do. Okay. So we're going to load this up and we'll put it on 125th so that way we've got a consistent speed. So stick the tab in between those little slots there. Advance. I always like to do at least one advance and then a partial advance to make sure that it's setting properly. At this point, you would want to close the door. I'm not going to do that because this is a demonstration. You'll notice as well that this is rotating. That is important to notice. If you think for whatever reason you didn't load the film properly, uh, if that's not moving, you probably didn't. So let's say, all right, cool, we shot through the roll. Let's rewind it because we're done. Again, your back, the back of your camera would be closed at this point, and the frame counter would read you know, 24 or 36 or what have you, and it'd be a little bit harder to advance. When it becomes harder to advance, you do not want to yank on it anymore. Just assume that the roll is out and begin the rewind process. Now to rewind film in this camera, there's a little button there on the bottom. So you press in on this, that will engage this film sprocket, yes, film advance sprocket. Kick this up and just kind of reel it in. And again, when you're doing this, the back is closed. I'm doing this open for demonstration purposes. So then you would lift up on this to open up the back and you would take your roll out. Now you want to roll it all the way in so that there's no film lead, but I don't want to do that with this because I can't find my little, uh, tool to get the film laid out. So I always prefer to leave these systems uh, locked and ready to fire just because if you don't, then sometimes that could cause issues with them moving forward. So I always prefer to leave it advanced, ready to go, and then turn it off. On the bottom here as well, you have, as mentioned, film rewind button. You have this here, these there, a tripod socket, and a battery compartment. So these are going to be the contacts for an auto advance attachment. This is going to also be the same thing. You'll notice that there is a difference here as opposed to, so the ME Super has kind of the similar layout, but it also has this cover. There's no such cover that exists here. It's kind of this black washer that sits over there. So if you're looking for something like this to replace that, it does not exist. This is how it's supposed to look, just so you know kind of convenient because if you were to use uh, like an auto advance system you don't want to have to like kind of pull this off and then worry about losing it or whatever then kind of connect it just simplifies it a little bit contacts right here for it uh, battery compartment here it takes two LR44 battery negative side up and that is pretty much it anyway thanks for watching like the video if you enjoyed it subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so Appreciate you all as always, and I'll catch you on the next one.